here we go. So we've all worked in companies where we felt like we're not appreciated or that other employees get preferential treatment, right? Uh, industrial psychologist Fiona Martin joins us in studio right now to chat about the, wait for it, boss's pet phenomenon. There are a few right here on this production. I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> Fiona, very good morning. When we talk about favoritism in the workplace, what are we talking about? So favoritism is when certain employees or an employee gets preferential treatment over others for reasons that are not related to job factors. So it's not because they're a good performer or that they've got you know, great skills. It is very often based on a personal relationship that they have with that particular manager or the decision maker. So the types of favoritism that we see in the workplace is things like nepotism. So this is, of course, getting favors because of a kinship relationship with someone. And then there is cronyism, uh -huh. which is often being favored because you are friends with someone. Yes. I was watching this series on TV. Um, what is it called? Uh, something about the boss, uh, the boss lady. I'm forgetting the title. Anyway, uh, there are these three characters. It's, uh, it's Kate, Ginny, and Sutton, right? These three ladies. The young lady who is the social media director of this magazine called Scarlet, she got the job because her dad knew the Jacqueline, who's like the big boss there. But the difference comes in where she left all of that at the door. And once she got the job, she was actually really, really good at it. And she got herself promoted. So the fact that she got in through her dad, well, it didn't matter anymore, right? And she became then the boss's favorite because she was really good at her job. And we do see this happen in reality, right? People will come in because of someone, but they turn out to be really, really good at what they're doing. I mean, then where does the boss's pet um, phenomenon lie with those people? So I guess signs that it is blatant favoritism, right? And I'll touch on the example that you mentioned. It's often where there is, you know, policies as well as rules are inconsistently applied based on how the manager feels about you. So there are different oh. rules for different people. Because, you know, whether you're a top performer or average performer, you know, rules, procedures, you know, generally should be applied consistently. The other thing as well, or I guess the other aspect around favoritism is getting opportunities purely based on the, an outside work relationship that you have with that boss or other factors, you know, where you converge on. Mm. So it's not because you performed well. It's not because, um, you know, of your skills or your experience. It Merit. is It is really based on the emotional attachment or connection that you have with that decision maker. So that's when it becomes favoritism. So it's not merit, it is unearned mm. and, and often factors not even related to the world of work. So in your case where perhaps your boss just takes a liking to you because you are actually a top performer. Mm. In many cases where people accuse individuals of being favored or being the boss's pet, one of the things I often encourage them to say, first exclude the fact that they are not actually getting that recognition and the reward because of merit, right? Mm. It could be a case where indeed, maybe it's because they're getting the best projects uh, you know, due to their performance, due to their commitment, due to how they've showcased skills and expertise. So. If you still determine that, well, none of those things are present and it is purely non-objective factors, then it might be a case of favoritism. And when we talk about the different signs that, you know, this particular employer or boss could be showing favoritism, what would those signs be? So, as I mentioned, it's, you know, inconsistent application of rules for, mm. for unjustifiable reasons. And by unjustifiable, it's got nothing to do with the work factors. Yeah. It's also, you know, access to opportunities that have not been equitably or fairly distributed. Mm. So, yes, of course, top performers sometimes will get the, the top projects, so to speak, or some of the complex uh, projects, for example. But, however, where there is no clear criteria and where there is no transparency in how this decision was made, very often, you know, it is a case of uh, favoritism and also um, significantly more access to the boss than other people. So they get to spend a lot of time with the boss. They get yeah, a lot so of inside information. if you don't play golf with the boss, <laughs> then you're in trouble, essentially. Absolutely. And remember, sometimes people are favored for factors that, you know, are out of your... It could be either because of race, because mm. maybe they've got an, a shared interest outside of the world of work, you know, such as you mentioned, golf. Mm. Maybe their family members know each other. Maybe they grew up in the same hometown. So sometimes it's really because they've got some sort of connection um, outside of work that, that has nothing to do with, with, with the workplace. So when a manager favors an employee over others, what sort of impact could that have in the office environment? So a very obvious one is demoralization. Mm. You know, of course, if other people feel that they are being treated unfairly, it causes disengagement and um, 
also intent to leave. So in many cases, you might lose really good top performers because if people feel that merit is not what gets you, uh, gets you ahead around here, they might take their skills somewhere else because, you know, if things are ba based purely on a friendship or because a boss likes you, then they feel that, well, my contributions here are meaningless, you know, as long as I'm not a favorite. They'll feel uh, so like they're speak. overlooked. Absolutely. And from a company perspective, it, there's not only an emotional impact around favoritism. If people are appointed because of cronyism, because you're someone's friend and you have mm. not been evaluated on merit, it means you might not be or are unlikely the best person for the job. So if you're not putting the best person in the job, it means that th that role cannot perform to the level that it requires. Then you have companies struggling or suffering in terms of performance, in terms of innovating, because the appointments have not actually been made based on skills and criteria, but based on the ex relationships that exist between certain individuals. And I like that you say that. So on the back of that, if you are or find yourself to be a victim of favoritism on the receiving end, what, what sort of discourse do you have? I mean, where, where, where can one go if they're feeling disgruntled? What should you do about it, essentially? That's what I'm asking. Absolutely. So if you feel that there's blatant favoritism within your department, I would encourage you to speak to your manager, but don't go and outright accuse them of, you know, uh, favoring someone because they're most likely going to deny it and, you know, mm. it's just going to cause more tension. Set a meeting with them and the conversation should be about you and what you want to get out of that work relationship. So don't make it about someone else. Don't go in there and say, uh -huh. oh, I feel so and so, you know, gets all the opportunities. So if so you can tactfully approach it and say, I noticed there are certain projects, you know, that you know, other people in the team have been able to, to be privy to. Can I get on those projects? Uh, you know, can I get that opportunity? If I can't now, what are the things I need to do to get on the next high profile project? So make it about you and ask for the things that you feel you're not getting, but in a manner that focuses on you, your skills and your development. That way, you know, if it's a case where maybe you are misperceiving the favoritism issue, you don't go and accuse someone and you know, ultimately you can hopefully get what you want out of the relationship. However, if that doesn't work, you may have to involve HR, especially where there are po policies that have been explicitly violated, you know, from a workplace perspective because of a boss, you know, uh, favoring someone. So the diplomatic approach would then help you save face one and two, uh, you know, maintain good relations and a good, call it energy in, in, in the workspace. Yes, and also because sometimes it's quite difficult to prove the favoritism unless you have unequivocal objective evidence that favoritism has occurred here. Yeah. So in that way, it helps you to at least balance. And then I guess make it put the boss on the spot and say, I also want to be part of those opportunities. I also want to you know, get time and development from you such as the other team members are getting. And if you're the person who's being accused of being favored, <laughs> this one is very important and I imagine very uh, contentious. Yeah, so look, in some cases, maybe your boss happens to like you because you're a top performer and it obviously might cause resentment from other team members. So you mm. end up being stuck because you're on the receiving end of something that maybe you might deserve. I would then encourage you, you know, particularly if you want to have good collaborative relationships uh, with your team, use your spotlight and your position of privilege to bring other people into the spotlight. So if your boss is always throwing you all the best opportunities, the next time say, hey, I think William will also be great to add on this project. I see he's got really great right. skills. So use that opportunity to also involve other people, especially people that you feel deserve the opportunity, um, you know, and, and use that. And if, especially if your boss listens to you and likes to you, they might actually, uh, can, sorry, might actually take that advice as well. And then in that case, you, you, you are perceived by your team to be someone, yes, who might be favored, but you are actually collaborative and you're not hogging everything for yourself. So it's not a bad thing to be liked by the boss. But the, you know, the waters could get very quickly mu muddy, right? If that relationship is not managed um, professionally. Absolutely. And as long as you know with integrity, it is based on work-related factors, mm. right? So if you're being rewarded because of your performance, because of your efforts, then it's okay, I guess, to be liked by the boss. Uh, but if it's a case where there's manipulation or maybe it's on aspects, you know, you're friends, you grew up together, whatever the case might be, then it might be there's a little bit of, there might be a little bit of, of bias between the relationship, which might give you undue influence with that particular manager. I like that. Always informative. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. That is Fiona Martin, our resident industrial psychologist, joining us right here on The Morning Show. We're taking a quick ad break. Thank you.